Mr. Brian Hook, thank you very much for joining us on I-24 News today. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are European and Asian leaders responding to your calls for greater pressure on Iran? Companies are given a choice. They can either do business in the United States or they can do business in Iran, but they cannot do both. And given the size of the U.S. market compared to the Iranian market, all major firms choose the U.S. market. We have seen a lot of rhetoric and bluster coming out of the Iranian regime, which is to be expected. This is a regime that historically does not come to the negotiating table without a lot of economic and diplomatic isolation. We think there's an opportunity to get a better deal that addresses not just Iran's nuclear program, which is what the Iran deal does, but also addresses intercontinental ballistic missiles, terrorism, cyber threats, terror finance, maritime aggression, their support for Hezbollah and Hamas. And so we very much want to get a better deal in place. Our maximum economic pressure campaign is designed to bring Iran back to the negotiating table. The world's leading oil importers were issued waivers to continue importing Iranian uh, oil. Doesn't this go against the maximum pressure uh, creed? How long will these sanctions be waived? So we had to give a handful of waivers to uh, about eight countries because we did not want oil to go to 90 or or $100 a barrel. And uh, now that we've got a better supplied oil market, I think we're in a better position to get to our goal of zero imports of Iranian crude oil. I think Iran faces a lot of economic headwinds right now. Uh, the Rial has, has gone down 75% this year. They've had over 100 major firms announce that they're pulling out of the Iranian market. A lot of capital flight. SWIFT, the international uh, financial system, has disconnected 50 Iranian banks, that, uh, the same number of banks that, that we have sanctioned. And we've got uh, sanctions on all of Iran's oil exports. The combination of all these things is a very powerful effect. And the Iranian regime has to decide whether they want to, they have a choice. They can either keep promoting terrorism and instability around the Middle East or they can watch their economy collapse. How much of a factor was Prime Minister Netanyahu's lobbying in uh, Donald Trump killing the uh, Iran nuclear deal? We know that he, uh, he and the president saw eye to eye that it was a very bad deal. And we did make one effort uh, to try to fix the deal with the Europeans. Uh, we were not able to get agreement with them because they did not want to see the sunset clauses uh, uh, amended. Mm. So the president left the deal in May. That has given us a lot of diplomatic freedom to go after Iran's threats to peace and security that are quite broad and they're much bigger than just the nuclear threat. Mm. If you look at the polls uh, inside Iran, the Iranian people, they place the blame for economic hardship on this regime and on President Rouhani specifically. This is a regime that for 39 years has been robbing its own people blind. It's deeply corrupt. It's a dark and brutal religious dictatorship, uh, which paradoxically has increased the secularization of Iran. And so, I think the Iranian people know that our sanctions are designed to target the regime. They, they do not target the Iranian people, and I can prove that because we have exceptions for humanitarian assistance. Mm -hmm. um, we have sanctions on oil and banking and on a number of things. We do not sanction food, agricultural products, medicine, or medical devices. And the Iranian regime needs to make sure that when, those, when the humanitarian assistance is allowed, the regime needs to make sure that it reaches the Iranian people. The Iranian people have been protesting this regime for some time. We've had, uh, in addition to the massive protests in December and January, you now have protests in about a dozen cities, teachers and truck drivers. This administration uh, made a shift in its policy from the prior administration to support the Iranian people against the regime and their demands for a better way of life, <clears throat> better economic future, more human rights, greater respect for their dignity. And we're going to continue to stand with the Iranian people. A lot of the things that the United States is asking the regime to do are the same things that the Iranian people are asking this regime to do. One of the biggest is get out of Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, we, during December and January, there were protesters holding up signs saying, remember us and forget Syria. And so um, 
we think that our campaign of economic pressure is going to give some support to the Iranian people and to help accelerate their desire for reform. Uh, the United States, our policy is a change in the regime's behavior. The future of the Iranian regime is up to the Iranian people. It's not up for the United States to decide.